Hello and welcome everyone to another Einstein Forum online event. My name is Misha Gabovic. I'm a staff member at the Einstein Forum. And I'm very happy to welcome you to another event in our ongoing Solidarity in Danger series that the Einstein Forum co-organizes with the Research Committee 47, Social Classes and Social Movements of the International Sociological Association. Our guest, our speaker tonight is Luca Pataroni, who will speak about choreopolitics, rhythm as emancipation. Um, and I would love to present Luca because uh, we've actually been working together uh, for a little while, but uh, I will not do so. Uh, instead, in order to uh, present him and then also chair the discussion, we have Hartmut Rosa, Professor of General and Theoretical Sociology at the Friedrich Schiller University in Jena. And I'm extremely happy uh, that he has found the time to be with us tonight because, of course, Hartmut Rosa is one of the most original and, and also influential uh, sociological theorists writing today and someone whose work on time and temporality is read and debated not only in the sociological and wider scholarly community, but also by a wider public. So uh, he will uh, introduce Luca in a moment. I just have one uh, technical a request. Um, everybody is very welcome to participate in the discussion. In order to do so, please use the Q&A box that you all see at the bottom of your screen. Please do not use the chat function as that can be very distracting. Uh, everything that you type into the Q&A box uh, will be visible to the moderator and he will then be able to select your questions and comments, uh, read them out, or even uh, allow you to participate in the discussion with video and sound. And uh, with that, I'm uh, very happy to give the floor to Hartmut Rosen. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Misha Gabovic, for, uh, for the introduction and for setting this up. I, I find this really a very exciting uh, event and it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce uh, Luca Pataroni uh, to you uh, to the, and to the audience, which uh, whom I'd like to welcome also at, uh, at this time. Right. So uh, Luca Pataroni is Maître d'enseignement de recherche uh, in, uh, in uh, the uh, famous École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, which is, uh, it sounds uh, it, it sounds like a technical, uh, technological institute, but it has a lot of very interesting social uh, uh, social sciences. So like, for example, you might know Margaret Archer, who is also um, uh, teaching and, and, and working there. And uh, Luca Pataroni is, uh, he's actually leading a research group there on city habitat and collective action, which already tells you something about the, the, the areas he's been uh, working in, collect collective action and uh, social movements, uh, and in, in uh, particularly in precarious situation, but always with a view towards emancipatory potentials. So in his work, he clearly has also a normative interest, and he does something which I as as someone who has written a lot on social acceleration find very exciting, right? He, he explores the spatiality and the temporality of time with a particular view uh, to rhythms. And he has uh, uh, recently co-written uh, or he has co-written a book together with four other authors which has just been published in French. Pour une it's, a, it's a manifest, uh, the manifest pour une politique des rythmes um, uh, uh, yeah, and he has co-written uh, co it with four other uh, people. And it's uh, the interesting thing about it is that it's uh, it, it it combines uh, to say it with the title of another uh, publication he has uh, done the rhythms of life with the rhythms of the city and the social and the political rhythms. So what they are actually doing and what Luca Pataroni is doing right is something like a rhythmology with uh, this. Uh, so to speak, with a triple uh, perspective on the spatiality of social rhythms and their potential for emancipation and coordination, creating a collective action. But also, uh, uh, of course, the, 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 spatiality, the spatiality, the temporality and the political side of this. And uh, I must say, I find this very uh, fascinating. He has also written other things like The Social Fabric of the Network Society, for example, a book published by Routledge in uh, 2008. But now I don't want to take uh, up any more time. We are very happy uh, to have you here. It's an honor and a pleasure. And the title of your presentation now is Choreopolitics, Rhythms as Emancipation. And with this, uh, I'd like to give, uh, to, to give the floor to you, Luca Pateron. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, thank you very much to the Einstein Forum and, and Misha Gavovic for the invitation. So it's an honor. And thank you very much, Rosa, also for uh, being the chair. It's also a pleasure and an honor as you have been influential 
in the writing of our book and uh, and you will uh, recognize yourself also in in the, in the talk i'm going to give now i'm going to share my uh, my screen i hope everything is fine you you can see it i believe and um, my my aim today i will talk for 30 40 minutes max my aim is to really show how reason are an interesting analytical but also political concept to address uh, contemporary uh, social problems, uh, shortcomings of the capitalist society, if one might say. And uh, to give you just a, a, a hint about what we understand by reason is um, uh, a fantastic uh, work. Uh, I don't see the name. It's, uh, it's drawn by uh, Fiona Del Pupo, who is a, is a great uh, PhD student uh, at our laboratory, Fiona Del Pupo. And, and it's uh, a situation we uh, all of us uh, uh, using Zoom, uh, I've known uh, on the first line, it's, uh, it's, it was uh, a, 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 an invitation for a talk in uh, Montpellier uh, a few uh, few months ago. Could have been that talk of tonight. And that would look like that if I would have been there, you know, taking the train, going into an auditorium, sleeping in a small hotel, and going back and forth and in different uh, special situations. Second uh, line is, uh, it's a, a, a meeting in, uh, in, in Lausanne, and I go there and I live in Geneva. Second, uh, third line, a meeting in uh, Geneva. And, um, and, uh, and, and the last line, it's uh, confinement. It's the three meetings in one afternoon. And uh, that's what we call the, the, the special environment of time. And uh, what I lose when I'm when I, in that situation, a feeling of uh, place, that is a feeling of alterity, a feeling also of hierarchy. I don't know. I don't know if the Einstein Forum, for example, is set in a great place, or, or I don't know. What it looks like, and also a feeling of uh, of uh, of situation. You know, uh, the fact that the world is made out of a different milieu, and uh, and that's that's what rhythm is about. Rhythm is about embodiment, about shift in time, about infrastructures. And about uh, that, uh, the fact that time never runs alone, but in order to give it meaning, it's also linked with a special situation. That would be the, uh, the, 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 the general point in the back of, uh, of my talk. Now I, I go to uh, the career politics and, and, and the, the conceptualization of, uh, of reason. As you, as uh, Atmut Rosa said, my talk is, uh, is Produced out of a collective uh, intelligence, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, not me alone. But there's also uh, tonight Manuel Antonoli, uh, a philosopher, French philosopher, Guillaume Drevon, Luc Wadinsky, uh, two geographers, Vincent Kaufmann, a sociologist, and myself. And we we brought that manifesto, uh, and that's uh, mostly uh, most of the content of tonight is uh, out of that, and uh, mixed with some of my own uh, little. Uh, uh, how to say, uh, stubbornness. And um, why reason matters? And uh, why, do we, why do we need reason? Or why do we think there is a problem with reason? And uh, in the first chapter of the book, we talk about uh, rhythmic pathologies of capitalism. Uh, it's uh, the idea that uh, the capitalist society, uh, the, the, the accelerated and fluid capitalist society, as uh, Artman Rosa has described it, uh, has uh, produced pathologies and uh, pathologies, social pathologies in the sense of uh, Axel Honet and the, the fact that there's social development that undermine the condition for self realization. And, uh, and it produces uh, a, a certain type of, of uh, pathologies. So I, will, I will come to that, uh, like, I don't know, congestion and stuff like that. Something which has been also described by Dr. Noza as a pathological deceleration and uh, and moment where things uh, break down, you know, uh, because they're going too fast. But they also break down because there is too much. And uh, and we, we use the concept of saturation. We also published another, edited another book on saturations. And for us, saturation is where the moment where accumulation loses its emancipatory potential. It means that, that, for example, you need objects, but when you have too much objects, what happens? You need information, but when you have too much information, what happens? And saturation, it's a moment where there's too much of something, and, uh, 
and it's uh, it's it, and it produces negative effects. And uh, and we and we will see right now that it's also a way to spatialize acceleration and to to think about those pathological uh, pathologies as something which uh, mixes rhythm, uh, time, and space. And uh, the first. Um, uh, pathology we can uh, uh, look at. I will go rapidly through uh, four of them. Uh, it's congestion. It's too many units. It's a, it's a problem of flows of functionality. And uh, and already when you are trying to handle with uh, with con uh, traffic congestion, you you need not only to make things go faster, but it's also to regulate slower and faster. Also to calibrate the size of the road. And you see, uh, it's uh, and, and rhythm as is linked also with those calibration and to the possibility of absorption and uh, uh, time and spatial absorption. And uh, but rhythm, the, the interesting aspect for us, rhythm, it's not only about uh, infrastructures or, or cars; it's also about objects, and we call uh, not more suffocation, another uh, rhythmic pathology, when there's too many objects. If the, the congestion was a, a functional pathology, it's like a vital one, you know, when you start suffocating, you know, and uh, there's no more room uh, for you and for your objects. And um, that's another way alienation is produced. Uh, alienation through accumulation, that's what we are looking at. And, um, and another uh, very well-known uh, uh, rhythmic pathology it's the one of dizziness, which has been also very well written about from uh, Yves Citon, about the too many uh, signs. And here it's a, it's a cognitive also disorientation. And, uh, and how, do you, uh, how do you manage? And, and of course, that's also uh, as I explain, and you need to, uh, to have time to process, and, and, but also you have time to, you need to select. You also can work on urban fabric and to, to put less signs, you know, and so there's, all, there's always, always this uh, special dimension. And, and finally, there is um, uh, the most, maybe the most important one, exhaust, exhaustion, uh, the burnout, you know, and maybe it's, a, it's a, some kind of a, a, a combination of all of them, but it's also a, a, an affective one. Uh, and there's a, and it's, it's not only a, a vital one, a functional one, a cognitive one, but affective one. And it's, it's linked with also too many objectives. And it's, you know, we are in a world by project, as Tosky says, and, uh, and, uh, and there are too many objectives we cannot keep with them and, it's, uh, and it produces burnout. You know? And uh, here's a picture comes from Christian Lutz because in our book, we had pictures from, uh, made by Christian Lutz during confinement. And he's a fantastic uh, photographer from Switzerland. He, he received the prize of the best photographer of Switzerland. He's also well known in Europe. And, and uh, I will have a, a few uh, pictures of him, made by him. Okay. Once we have seen uh, those different pathologies, uh, very briefly, uh, we can come back to them if you if you need. But they're not the core point. Uh, we have to to understand why reason can be a key concept and a political focus. And as we will show uh, see now, I will try to look at the three potencies or three powers of, uh, of reason, an emancipatory one, a commoning one, and a caring one. And uh, that will be uh, the, the follow up of, of, the, of the talk. And uh, in order to understand why reason is, a, is an apt category for, uh, for addressing those problems and what reason are the core of career politics. And before uh, going to career politics, Let's have a, a word about reason, because I've been talking a lot about reason, trying to show some aspects. But um, what's important to understand, it's uh, in our work, we are really uh, basing ourselves on, uh, on an important uh, transformation of the, of the meaning of reason, not a transformation, a, a shift in the understanding uh, of what reason are. Uh, it's uh, the idea that reason are a form. Huh? It's, uh, it's the work of uh, Benveniste, and Benveniste is a famous uh, linguist from France, uh, then followed by the work of uh, Henri Mechonique, and you can see the two books. Uh, and they, they, they went, uh, Benveniste said, okay, if we go look at the Greek, ancient Greek, before Platon, uh, Platon was really looking at rhythm as a, as a repetition, as a schema, and uh, as a cadence, and that was the, the main 
dimension of rhythm in, uh, in the intellectual, intellectual tradition uh, of the West. And, but uh, before that, this is the idea of rhythm as a rhythmos in the ancient Greek, a way of fluing, a way of uh, transforming. And, and beyond this, there's this idea of a transforming form and a form which is able to order in parts in a whole. So rhythm is about so, something about cosmos, something about the way nature is, uh, is allowing to, to uh, uh, assemble heterogeneity and give, uh, and give a form which is meaningful. And I will see that it's really important that meaningful form because it's also linked with identity, but also linked with oppression. Because when there's a form, there's a, there's a space, and then there's the possibility of uh, emancipation and oppression. I come back to that. And uh, when you start to look at the rhythm as uh, something uh, flowing, uh, uh, another diagram made produced by Guillaume Drevon, another uh, author of the book, which I think is here. So I say hi to him. And, uh, and the idea was to, to look at, uh, at, at the idea of, 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 of a plasticity of rhythm. Uh, it's not a, a fluidity, no? it's, it's, uh, but there are variation in repetition. There are uh, alias, uh, which are, a rhythm allows for variation while keeping on a certain form of continuity. Huh? It's, uh, and so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a more uh, labile relation to identity and to, and to form. And, uh, and one of the, the possibility of that is linked to the fact that it has a strong spatial dimension. Uh, I, I think that uh, the spatiality of rhythm is, uh, is uh, also uh, what gives it uh, its ability to, uh, to uh, compose uh, chaotic situations. And uh, in relation with space, uh, as uh, Atman Rosa said, uh, uh, it's, it's really a, 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 the major point for us uh, in relation to the, the fantastic discussion of uh, acceleration. It's, uh, if we go uh, further, we, we find uh, two other very important influence for us. It's the work of uh, Deleuze and Gattari, and the work of Roland Barthes. Again, uh, it's a French uh, philosopher, so we, we dig into the French tradition to, uh, to come up uh, with this idea of, uh, of, uh, of choreo politics and, uh, and, and the importance of rhythm. And for those of us in Gattari, they say rhythm spaces the world. It's a, it's a, special inter a temporal interval that produces special intervals, as they say. And, uh, and they call it, uh, they call it uh, ritornal, uh, jingles or ritornello. Uh, the, the, the ability, uh, that was the ability of the rhythmus, uh, of the uh, unifying the heterogeneous milieu of the living. So they, they come back to that, uh, to that idea of, uh, of that uh, unity uh, among heterogeneity. And, uh, and then we turn to, uh, to Roland Barthes. And Roland Barthes is really precious for us as um, he, he really thinks of rhythm as, a, as territory Yes, he has his idea of, uh, he's looking at the rules, at ruling, and, uh, and it's really important uh, for structuration. And, and, and if there's a form, there's a question of the rule is here. And for, uh, for uh, Bart, autonomy is the possibility of giving oneself his own rule. And it's not independence. It's really developing in time and space, the territory of, of, uh, of rule. And it's uh, timing and uh, gestures, you know, and conduct. And that's this strong uh, idea of uh, autonomy as being also the fact of having his own reason, but which means having his own territory. And, 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 and from that, there are two elements that uh, uh, comes from that. One is the subver subversive dimension of idiorism. When you're looking, going your own reason, you always tend to confront to uh, the normative reason produced by the established uh, system. And there's also the, the oppression of, uh, of one idiorism toward the other. And, uh, and, and for, the, for Roland Barthes, uh, he's, he's writing in his book, uh, he says, okay, I look at my window and I see a mother and the mother is holding uh, his child by the hand and she's really going fast and the, the child trying to go uh, here and there. So maybe something less violent than the picture here. And he's, Imprimming is, uh, is uh, inducing a rhythm to his child. And, and he says, this is told are the premises of power, the first of power. And yet it's a murder. It's his mother, you know? 
And so for him, uh, operation starts also uh, around that heterorhythm, which is not an intentional uh, domination, but a more complex relation to power. And uh, uh, that's something very important. That's the matter or the, that uh, career politics is tackling. And, um, and another element aspect, I was talking about idiorhythmic. And for uh, Bart, he had a dream, he, he, a fantasy, he calls it in his book, the idea of an idiorhythmic community. That's a community where everyone can go at his own rhythm. And he's going back to Mount Athos on the monk there. And in Mount Athos, there were like two types. There was Cenobitism, monk living in monasteries, and also Eremitism, monks living uh, in, uh, in the mountain. But both of them, they were not following uh, the common rules, like the Benedictine or the monk uh, with the, the Orare et Laborare. They were all going at their own rhythm. And, uh, and it's linked also with a special possibility, you know, uh, to how you articulate collective living and, and intimate living. And uh, I've been working on that for squats, uh, squatters as a big community. And, uh, and it's difficult, uh, as you all know, living with other, but living in a society, it's really difficult to go to your own rhythm. And, uh, and so we come to career politics. And choreo politics, uh, sorry, it's choreo politics, it's choreo politics. It's uh, somehow we could call it the dream, our dream, our fantasy of an idiorhythmic society. Uh, a, a, a society which uh, is not uh, uh, dictating uh, rhythm through uh, acceleration and through strong uh, infrastructures, and which, uh, but also which allows for a broader diversity of forms of life. And, uh, and uh, we will see. Uh, this is not only about uh, individual emancipation, it's really about how do we build a common world, how do we take care of the other. And uh, if I come back very briefly now on the rhythmic pathologies of capitalism, uh, to have them in mind because before uh, uh, digging in deeper into uh, choreo politics, um, the rhythmic pathologies of capitalism I was presenting briefly uh, at the beginning, they produce individual and collective alienation. And the fact that you cannot individually, but also collectively go to at your own rhythm, find your own uh, uh, meaningful life. And uh, they also impoverish our commonalities, uh, the way we build our common worlds, you know, and, uh, and uh, they, they, they reduce and, and liberal society has been stressing a lot the idea that we have interest and, 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 and uh, uh, opinions, but they're losing in liberal society uh, strong differences about strong attachments, about convictions. And so our, our hope is also to bring into the common world stronger attachments and, that, and, and you will see it's important attachments. And so the, those pathologies are produced detachments and, and, and then destruction huh? as, uh, as, uh, as the, the climatic also uh, question. And so the major political aim we have in the back of our politics, it's the question of uh, emancipation and differentiation, the question of multitude, huh, as raised by Arthur Negri, the question of commoning. commoning. The Laurent Thévenot talks about communities in the plural. How do we, how do we produce commoning and uh, share things without reducing the differences between the, the people? There's always some reduction, but uh, uh, a strong commoning and caring and attachments. Uh, recently, Latour. Uh, wrote a book about uh, where to land. And it's really about uh, where, how do we inhabit our world? Uh, a, a, a strong question uh, we inherit from the 70s, and, uh, but which has uh, urgent um, uh, aspects uh, right now with the destruction of, uh, of our world. And so uh, the, what I will attempt to do now for the, for the remaining, uh, I still have a to about 20 minutes, but I will take probably less. We have more time to discussion. I will try to, to discuss uh, all of those uh, different aspects. Choreo politics as the, the idea of choreography, of course. Huh? And, uh, and uh, our, our idea is that we can find in choreography uh, stimulating uh, political uh, elements and uh, intuitions. And, um, and when we are talking about choreography, we are not talking about the, the classical ballet, which is based on a, on a strong alignment, but something more akin to uh, Pina Bausch. Uh, this is a, a set, a stage by uh, Pina Bausch. And, uh, and the, 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 the idea that through choreography, you 
produce a common order, allowing for differences. Uh, you have uh, people uh, aligned, but there's a this strong person in a, in a, in a move, and that and the different uh, gestures, you know, and and the choreography is really uh, uh, producing a, 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 a common in us through the the, the 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 hospitality to those different gestures, you know, and and that's something what we kept, what we keep, and what we have in mind with choreography. And so. To make it uh, in a schematic way, and, and I will look and then uh, five minutes for each of the potencies. We have that idea. We have rhythmic pathologies, and then we are looking into rhythm to find rhythmic powers or potencies, puissance, we say in French. Huh? What is rhythm capable of? And we believe that there is, and you, you already felt it, I, I think, in what I discussed. There's, of course, that emancipation, idiorhythmia potency of uh, rhythm or power, which is uh, linked also with the broader idea of autonomy, but also liberty. This is commoning, we call it polyrhythmia, and which is linked uh, uh, in the end with justice. Uh, I won't go to justice uh, tonight. And uh, caring, arrhythmia, and which is linked also probably to something which we call the responsibility, which will be like more the anchored responsibility of ancionas. It will be more like a, a relational justice it would be more like an attached liberty, uh, so a relational liberty, if we have to, uh, to, to already give some more flesh to those concepts. But uh, I won't go into that maybe in the discussion. And um, so if I take the first one, uh, we already uh, saw a bit uh, of what Bart was saying. And for us, uh, the, that the eurythmia is really the question of how do we co individually and collectively become the subjects of our life. You know? so that's an old time question. And for us, it's really a master of time and space. And, uh, and as we'll see, uh, lots of the fights actually are about space. And I, I think it's really linked about the fact that we need to fight for space in order to fight against uh, acceleration. And uh, it is really important also for attachments and desires. And uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's also forging not only attachment, but also desires. And so it's not only slowing down, but as we will see, it's also accelerating. Uh, for us, it's really important to say that uh, we need also acceleration in order to bring out a desire. You know, sometimes we, we to connect someone from burnout, you maybe you have to build up a new uh, uh, conviction or new uh, impetus, uh, new desires. And, and so it's not about just simply disaccelerating, but it's really about uh, uh, working about uh, this uh, uh, acceleration and acceleration through time and space. And um, for, um, if we go into what a, a career politics of idiorhythma, uh, which allows for idiorhythma, we have to think about uh, how do society allow for breaks, allow for uh, discontinuous uh, rhythm, allow for uh, different moments of uh, uh, vulnerability, but also of participation. And uh, here, for example, uh, we, so we, have, uh, we need uh, uh, logistical uh, affordances, you know, uh, benches, benches in the, in, in the street. Uh, we, we know that it's, it's a major question to, to allow for different rhythm or different ways to, to go and sit in, in the street. But um, behind a, a career politics, there is a need for a broader question, broader uh, institutional affordances. And here are some of them which are about uh, uh, the possibility of sharing the maternity leaves. Uh, and uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fantastic way also to, to give possibilities uh, to, to, uh, to play out with uh, with, uh, the, 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 with a specific uh, moment, and, uh, but also the possibility of uh, uh, basic income. And, uh, and so it's only not only the spatial uh, possibility, but also the financial possibility, also the institutional possibility to, to build up that differentiation of uh, uh, rhythm, of, that is uh, forms of life, but uh, throughout uh, one's life, in the moment you are carrying a young child, it's not the moment you are young, uh, professional uh, fighting for your for your career and uh, and when well, you compose that of course um, and and finally as I was saying uh, uh, what was fascinating for us and uh, 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 also in my own work is the fact that uh, 
uh, we, we think about Occupy, we think about, uh, that's the ZAD in France. And, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it was an episode where um, they were uh, fighting against an airport and the people lived there for years and build up a cabin and, and build up another democracy. And it's really about uh, uh, <coughs> uh, fights since the seventies, you know, I've been also uh, heterotopias uh, building. Huh? They are not only fighting for a better future, but from right and now. And it's really about uh, uh, finding the condition, uh, the special condition of uh, developing uh, alternative forms of life, alternative rhythm, alternative uh, timing. That's for uh, eurythmia. Then polyrhythmia. Uh, the, the fact that uh, rhythm is uh, as, a, as a form, as a power of composition. Uh, it's, uh, it's not as, a, as, a, uh, as an individual or collective expression, it's also a as a form, it's also a, a relation to the other. Uh, a rhythm, it's in some way, is a, is a speed with the interaction, you know, and it's a, it's, it's a relational uh, concept. And, uh, and, uh, and we, we believe that uh, we need to common in, uh, we need to build commonalities, commons, but uh, the, 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 probably the, the, the concept is too, too, too narrow. Uh, in a society, to opening up to, to differences. No? And uh, as I was saying, it's going beyond the just the stakeholders who come in at a round table and say, okay, I have that interest and you put it into balance and, uh, and I give you that, you give me that. No? It's really about uh, coming through sharing affects uh, around the situated fight and something, Laurent uh, Tefteau, but other, Misha Gabovic actually is working on those questions and uh, and Russian Timuri and other. And, um, and this polyrhythmia. Uh, I was talking about uh, I was talking about uh, Bausch, Pinar Bausch, but the other influence for us is also free jazz. Uh, the moment where uh, where there is um, the, the acute idea of uh, building up a, a common uh, a composition based on uh, radical singularities, and that's uh, and uh, and the rhythmic composition is uh, is central uh, to, to to free jazz. And, uh, and, and then it's uh, something um, which we have in mind. Uh, and of course, it's, uh, our book is also a manifesto. So lots of things we are also presenting tonight. So um, it uh, will need to, to be uh, further clarified, for inv further investigated. And, but um, that's, um, that's also to give you the, the range of the question we, we are trying to uh, arise. And around this polyrhythmia, this, this question uh, was also a central point of uh, Ahmoud Rosa uh, uh, discussion uh, already 10 years ago. Uh, the, the idea that to, with acceleration, we need, there's a time uh, lapse between uh, political decision and demo democratic uh, working. And, uh, and it's fantastic to see the General Assembly of Occupy uh, in New York. And it's uh, all those assemblies, uh, when they are making occupation, they, they produce, uh, moments of life, the kitchen, they share a cooking, but they also have these assemblies where people also make gestures, where also people shout to have a, like a voice, uh, body voice, uh, megaphones, uh, amplifiers. And, uh, and it's really, uh, we see uh, the, 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 the passage situation of that democratic moment, which is also uh, allowing for that slowing down of, uh, of democracy and uh, and trying to link with the uh, political acceleration, and uh, another example, and that's an, another direction. Something uh, we've been working a lot. Uh, it's uh, about uh, effervescent moments. Uh, it's uh, polyrhythmic. It's also about uh, how you compose uh, uh, supporters who are who are drunk uh, uh, and crowds, and it, which is also about uh, you know uh, uh, speaking up, you know, and uh, and so the. The, the idea that rhythm is all can be about slowing down, but also about uh, speeding up, about uh, of, of disarticulating the body, or about aligning it, and you know, and and that's uh, the, the 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 interesting aspect of uh, of that uh, of that concept. And uh, uh, and career politics is also about how do you manage uh, festive crowds. And uh, in another direction, uh, it's uh, it's also about coexistence of speed and. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we know that you know bikes uh, and uh, and cars and uh, here is a twenty uh, kilometer zone which is called the encounter zone in Switzerland huh? and uh, 
when nobody, everyone should be, is able to, to, to be there and negotiate tensions, you know, and uh, so it's not uh, about, uh, on the right, it's more about uh, making a uh, uh, Bahnhof, uh, no, uh, no, uh, uh, autoroute um, highways for, uh, for, uh, for bikes and, uh, and they, um, it's a separation because bikes, when they go fast, they become also uh, 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 hard mobility and they have, a, uh, they, uh, they really impose their, uh, their rhythm and, their, and, and especially their speed. Uh, and uh, and so it's really about how do you compose or do, uh, do we separate or do we uh, uh, do we uh, link or uh, uh, gather together uh, with more contentious dimension? Huh? That's uh, elements of our core politics, uh, which are been debated in different uh, settings. And the last one uh, of the of the of the of uh, rhythmic power. Or, it's a caring power. Uh, it's a, it's a, probably it's the one we 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 work less, uh, at least in relation to nature. Uh, we are, I've been working a lot on the social work, but uh, the idea of uh, rhythm is also about uh, anchoring. Uh, it was already suggested by uh, Idrisme, but it's really about uh, how do we compose rhythm also to uh, to give hospitality uh, to uh, to to care for the. For the precarious and the vulnerable, and it's uh, and we find again that broader idea of uh, Rutmos, uh, the articulation of uh, human and human rhythm, and uh, another uh, point that was central to uh, to our uh, discussion about you know the, the discrepancy of acceleration, uh, which and the consummation which go faster than the possibility to uh, re-enact uh, uh, nature and. Uh, uh, I don't remember the, the way to say it in English. Sorry, and um, and it's really about accompanying, airing, and hospitality. And again, it's also a, a set of gesture of special situations. Uh, here's the picture of Christian Lutz. Uh, yeah, about the way we also articulate uh, nation and buildings. Uh, we can think about the buildings from Japan, uh, which are built around a tree. And uh, there's lots of uh, this, there's lots of uh, debates now in Geneva, for example. Uh, about uh, not destroying trees which have been growing for 100 years for a, a project, even if it's a so social project. So it's, a, it's really about the, the, how do we care for the rhythm of nature and uh, the slow building up of certain dimension as the slow building up of an attachment of, uh, of old people to his uh, apartments. And um, and uh, but uh, in this core politics, there are other elements. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, Luke Gwadinski in our group. is a, is a specialist of night, uh, uh, and days and night rhythm also. And the fact that you put less light at night, you know, in order to have more room for nature at night, you know. So this uh, this artificialization is also a way to refine, re-articulate. Uh, uh, urbanism and, uh, and nature uh, reason. And, uh, and it's also working on all the devices which are uh, producing the, 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 the violence of acceleration or the, the heterorhythmic uh, dimension of, uh, of uh, capitalist uh, society. And uh, of course, permaculture. Uh, uh, the, the, again, uh, it's also finding the gesture to accompany uh, accompaniment of, of, of agriculture, uh, of course, that's, uh, that's for sure a fantastic uh, uh, example of, uh, of that uh, rhythmia. And, and, uh, and finally, that picture uh, as a reminder also of uh, the potential violence of uh, holding someone by the, the end. Holding someone by the end, it's also when you slow down and uh, and, uh, and, and sustain the body of the other in, in his own rhythm, you know, and, and again, time and space, uh, body and uh, body and, and special situation. And uh, that's, that's probably also another way to, to think about uh, arrhythmia. Okay, then my last uh, side, side. Uh, just a few elements, uh, I don't have a, a fantastic conclusion to, to, to uh, to this uh, work in progress and to this idea that uh, choreo politics or, or politics of rhythm, if we want to make it more simple or, or maybe less pedant, uh, it's about gesture, institution, infrastructures. And, you know, it's uh, when time meets space and when, uh, when, or when the, the idea that uh, 
uh, rhythm, but also acceleration, uh, they have mostly uh, been looked at uh, through time uh, lenses. And then we need to have uh, special lenses because uh, uh, it's where also uh, lots of the urban struggles and more broadly territorial struggles uh, happened in capitalist society. You know, it's claim for space, uh, claim for uh, another relation to, to territory and to nature. And so that's, uh, that's the, the central probably idea. And so it's uh, uh, Ligozinski, uh, but uh, Vasek Hoffman also, uh, they have been also uh, involved by uh, uh, time offices. Huh? They built that in, in France or Italy, you know, we've been working on urban politics about time politics, uh, but it's more than that. You know, we need uh, not only work on store hours, but also on spatial distribution on settings on proximity. Proximity uh, we, has been around for the last 20 years but I think it's a central element uh, uh, for uh, politics of rhythm. And uh, it's not only decelerating, but offering room for maneuver and to appropriate. Uh, it's breathing, slowing down and intensifying. So nurturing attachments and desires, uh, which, is, uh, which has to do not only with time, it has to do with time also, because uh, there's a question of utopia, of projects and in time in the future. It's a, it's a fundamental element of desire, but it's also the desire and attachments of uh, of one uh, dwelling or inhabiting the world, or of one uh, playing and, and, and laughing with, uh, with friends. And, uh, and so uh, also the situation we lost in my first slides when I was alone tonight, tonight uh, in my office or in my house, and, uh, uh, and I was not coming to Berlin, not going to Montpellier, not going to Lausanne. Uh, and, uh, and so it's really about uh, that, uh, that, that fighting against alienation through accumulation, through acceleration, it's also about uh, uh, reconquering uh, space. And it's finally about the possibility to disrupt and be part, and also the possibility to stay apart. Uh, that idea that uh, rhythm contains alias, that's the fact that you, uh, you can stop and, and sit on your bench, or you land, or you, or you, you stop on your uh, on your way or you but you also uh, stay apart and you know and that's an important question about uh, the normativity of participation policies and uh, those questions are always uh, have to do with uh, with the special settings also all right that's uh, that's the end and uh, on my timing it's just uh, 40 minutes yes thank you very much uh, for listening and uh, Atmund Rosa I'm eager to listen to your comment or questions yeah yeah, thank you very much, uh, Luca Pateroni, for this uh, fascinating talk, uh, which I really like a lot, you know, because I always thought that in my own work, I really, I, I, I think I neglected, right, really doing a, 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 or coming up with a good idea of politics of time. And if, when I was writing Social Acceleration, I realized how important rhythms really are, right? And, uh, but I've never really worked it out. So I find uh, what you're doing and, and what your group is doing absolutely uh, uh, fascinating. And I'm grateful for the chance also to discuss it with you. But I do see, so, so I do, uh, first of all, I would like to invite everyone, uh, right, uh, all the all the people uh, who are uh, participating or watching in the webinar, uh, they are really free uh, and well, very welcome to type questions or comments or ideas they have on making our world a better place into the um, in the into the question and answer uh, um, uh, part, right? As as you heard from uh, Misha Gapovic in the beginning, but I'd like to start with the with actually with particularly with one question I have when I was listening to you and and and. Uh, and, and reading your book, I think, uh, in my view, there is a certain tension between two things which I like, right? So one thing is the idea of collective social rhythms and how important they are, right? I mean, when you do, when you study temporality, human temporality, you always find it. I mean, it's not just uh, um, uh, social rhythms. It's the, for example, it's you know, it's the rhythm of day and night, right? Which of course plays plays a huge role in social life too. And you had it in your presentation with the dimming of lights. <laughs> Since I like to do astronomy at night, right? I'm very grateful for the idea let's have something like a night right where you dim not just the lights but also the, the 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 collective form of life so i think you can make great arguments and you do make great arguments why having a collective sense of time a rhythm of life 
is very important. So I would say there is this collective element, right? But then, of course, you always stress the idiosyncrasy or the idiorhythmic um, uh, part, as you say, with Roland Barthes and others, right? Finding your own time, going at your own pace, right? And I think these two somehow always are at odds, right? The idea, and I think this actually leads to the 24-7 society in the end, the idea that everyone should, uh, should be able to take his or her time off when he or she wants to, or feels like it, right? And the idea that everyone could go at his or her speed of life, right? So the, the idea to give everyone the individual rhythm is always at odds with the collective rhythms. And I think even politically, because you really have it in the political debates, right? It's something like, let's let's have the Sunday as a day off, right? That's a collective thing. And then of course people say, well, but someone might not be a Christian, but let's say a Muslim, then it's Friday and the other one might be a Jew, then it should be Saturday. So if you want to allow for poly, for, for the polychronic things, right? Or the, for even for the idiorhythmic things, you always get in 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 in, in trouble with the with the with the collective rhythms of life. So I, I really wonder how you deal with that problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's a, it's a great uh, and, and central question and uh, um, a, a first element, but which is not at all an answer. Uh, far from that, it's the one aspect uh, that. Uh, the idea of idiorism is uh, about, uh, it's, uh, I, I tried at one moment, I was saying it's individual and collective uh, reasons. And so there's a, and so it's, uh, it could be also taken as a, as a, as a collective idiorism. You know, the, the fact is, for example, uh, uh, how, how a monk uh, uh, setting or a monastery in relation to the, the rest of the society. And it's, uh, is this collective dimension of idealism, and, um, and, uh, and 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 so it's uh, so it's really about uh, the constitution at one's level or at a, at a collective level of uh, of a proper rhythm, and, and that's uh, that's uh, that's one uh, one aspect which is important because uh, then there's this question of uh, okay the, the the monk has uh, elements uh, of collective elements that allow them to to build up also the monastery to. To, uh, to to bring those walls and uh, and I'm also part of a artist cooperative and, and and really need to set to set also walls and to have a, a collective power of uh, of setting uh, uh, of setting at least a, a, a form of common and and then the question is within that form of common we have to be able that uh, we don't uh, uh, Eliminate, eliminate the possibility of uh, differing within that uh, common. And that's the interest about uh, uh, monk co collectivities, which are more uh, uh, open to uh, individual uh, timing, you know? And uh, so it's, uh, it's at, at what point we, uh, we regulate uh, the, that relation between each individual and, uh, and the collective uh, times he, may, he mainly refer to. And so, and, as um, uh, lifestyles have to uh, uh, develop to, uh, and, and also call for recognition, it's all, uh, very often a, 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 a collective uh, idiorhythmic which is produced and is asked and, and confronted to the, to the established uh, rhythm. And, uh, and, and, and the idea, it's, it's, to, uh, it's, it's within those uh, uh, social movements, we need those uh, Collective building up of heterotopias, uh, we would say. How do we don't lose the idea that uh, even with that, we, we have to be open to the possibility of each one to to be different, and that's uh, that's that's more of an aim than. Uh, but it's true. It it brings a, 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 a it brings a, a structural contradiction, mm. which probably you can historically appease, but you, know, you cannot avoid. You know mm. and. Uh, and it's a, it's a problem also with dwelling, you know, uh, to dwell uh, is always uh, uh, reaching a, a certain point of singularity. And then you have to confront with uh, apartments, with formalization of habitat. And, and it's, it's, it's a strong uh, contradiction. And, and so it's, uh, it's true that uh, if we take in serious choreo politics, if we take in serious the question of uh, justice, mm. we cannot avoid the, the idea that all, not all idiorism, uh, have can have the same claim to recognition, huh? 
And then uh, that's the idea that uh, uh, you are talking about with uh, your rhythm of, uh, of the Muslim uh, system. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then, uh, then it's, uh, it's interesting because in the Ottoman system, or, or right now also, uh, I think uh, in, in, uh, in Lebanon, there is also Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which mm -hmm. are, uh, which are uh, uh, the, with the possibility to close the shops. Then mm -hmm. you can, uh, you can, there's an alignment, of course, we don't come as a uh, yes. I have my own religion, and, and I need to close my shops on on Tuesday because yeah. that's my my own idiotism. So there's there's this question of idiotism. It's uh, it becomes political when it starts as being a, a political claim. And uh, in a squat, it's already a political claim when I want to go in the common room and there are punks playing around and I just want to rest. And yes. I'm studying that, you know. But in a society, it's really the political claim of. Uh, of a religious movement or the political claim of uh, alternative lifestyles to be uh, integrated. And, and then there are question, uh, even Abermasian question of, uh, of public debates and, uh, and all the recognition question. And so we, it's absolutely true the, 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 that central tension between idiorhythmia and, uh, and, and polyrhythmia is uh, the political uh, fundamental tension and uh, which is not solved. Like choreo yeah. politics, which is not a way to maybe appease it in a different way that the liberal system has done. Yeah, it's because I mean I think you know it's very interesting when you think you talked about the pathologies of uh, of uh, of our society, right? That and particularly also about the temporal uh, pathologies. And now uh, and of course I mean I, I find this very uh, very helpful how you had the four uh, the four elements of it, right? Like uh, saturation and um, uh, and the other ones, right? Uh, but um, but I wonder, you know, when I think of the rhythms and what happens to them, I always find that there are two elements. I mean, two, actually, I would say there are kind of two tendencies which destroy our rhythms, right? One is what you could call privatization. And this is, of course, what kind of destroys collective rhythms. It, it's very interesting when you look at uh, social lives, right? Even like day and night or so, right? I mean, for ages, for centuries, since human beings were there, for example, day was different from night, right? And actually, some days, like Sunday were different from uh, other days, like work days, for example, right? And of course, we, we clearly have a kind of a privatization there. So everyone, we don't all get up when the sun comes up, which was a kind of natural tendency for a long time. But then everyone got up when, the, you know, when work starts, the sirens uh, of the factories, of the, of the mills called people to work, right? And this is now kind of privatized. So when you really look at a, at a, at a habitat, actually, right, at a, at a flat or an apartment or a street, everyone sets his or her alarm clock to a different time. So that's privatization. And then we also have the phenomenon of flexibilization, right? A lot of people, not everyone, that would be a mistake to think, but a lot of people get up at a different hour every day, right? Tomorrow I have to get up at six, but uh, the day after it's enough if I get up at eight or so, and then I might even sleep long. So you see a kind of a destruction of rhythms. You could almost say on the one hand through privatization, everyone differently. And on the other hand, through flexibilization, every day on a different uh, on, a, on a different level so but the consequence of this of course is the 24 7 society right so so the 24 7 society is a society which does which is not structured by any sense of rhythm because the idea is you really leave it to to the individual or to individual groups maybe i can put my question in this way isn't the 24 society exactly I'm sure it's not right, but that's the question, right? Isn't the 24-7 society exactly the society you are aiming at? Because it means the social services, the social infrastructure is open all around the day and all around the year. And then individuals and groups can find their appropriate rhythms, right? So as, as I said, you know, I mean, I, th I always find that there is a tendency, even in chronopolitics, particularly in chronopolitics, I always kind of discuss and argue with my friends doing this, right? Because they always argue for, actually for flexibilization. They say, well, some mothers need, or some fathers, want to bring their kids to the care to the care services at eight and others at nine and the others at 11 and some might need it in the afternoon so let's have it all around right and 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 so on so so you could couldn't i say the highest emancipatory potential is when no one is forced into a collective rhythm when everyone can find his or her rhythm together with his or her group 
at, 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 at whatever time is, is, is useful. And my, I mean, I, I guess you won't say yes, but I think it's exactly this logic allowing emancipation, giving people freedom to find their own rhythms, which leads to total acceleration because then, you know, you can, it's because, because in this way you can try to optimize the way you use time, right? So the logic of this kind of idiorhythmic, idiorhythmic uh, power give, it leads to the 24 seven society, I would argue. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's another way to, to come back to the... the, the it's basically the, the same way. It's it's, yeah, yeah. No, but I think it's, it's important and it's, uh, uh, because it, we are, it's far from, uh, from uh, settled that, 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 that question and discussion. The, 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 yeah, I, I agree that would be, um, that would be a, a, a sad consequence of our... Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but that that uh, there's various elements uh, about that so, but, but but maybe uh, we come up with a conclusion which is uh, mm -hmm. so, so nice for me but um, the as we as we we try to 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 defend the, there's these three pillars of um, of uh, of core politics you know and emancipation uh, justice and uh, and caring mm -hmm. and and then so the two second pillars should avoid that you know yeah, okay, and, yeah, yeah. yeah it's because uh, it's what makes it a, what makes it a politics, uh, yeah. Which uh, the, because uh, but it's not. Uh, uh, I, I, I push you a little bit because I, and then I will yes. go a little bit in your direction. Uh, the, the 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 idea that uh, but it's it's really that's the reason I was uh, I stopped a bit longer on Bart and that's the question of uh, uh, disruptive uh, which is both. Uh, uh, subversive but also oppressive dimension of idealism. That's the question that idealism is a way to fight against uh, established uh, power uh, rhythm uh, and, and, uh, but also contains an operation and that's the reason the question of recognition of idealism of it's also a, a framed uh, question which is not uh, uh, as many uh, uh, Possibilities as many uh, people are there. Uh, then, uh, then there's a question of uh, how do we? Uh, uh, there's this great uh, Swiss German uh, uh, author of, of the 80s uh, who is still writing uh, called the PM. He wrote a book called Bolo Bolo, and in the 80s, and he was reinventing a society, and it was really about collectivization, sharing. But each each person, there was communities of uh, 500 people, but each person could switched from one community to, to the other. So he was trying to, to how to avoid, you know, uh, homogenization and, 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 and the question that's the, 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 the uh, capitalist pathologies produce uh, also life forms which are uh, highly disruptive. And so the, the idea of uh, idealism is also fighting for uh, other life forms which are less uh, destructive, which are, which are also uh, uh, more, uh, more caring and that, they also were uh, uh, allowing for attachment. So that's the idea that in a certain way, the, in the end, it also will tend to normatively reduce the, the range of idiorhythmia in a certain yeah, yeah. way. That's, that's a risk in a certain way, because if politics, uh, if justice and caring uh, are the main concern, then, yeah. uh, then uh, you cannot not do anything, you know, but uh, the, 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 the idea is to, to uh, broaden up that question yeah. of uh, of individualization and and maybe try to tackle it a bit differently, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, giving more flesh and more room for attachment and stuff like that. So it's 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 really a, an attitude about uh, about uh, opening up to the the the, the fantasy, the fantasy yeah, 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 okay. of idiorhythmia as a, as a as a political concern, which is important because it's not important to. Uh, to preserve a, a selfish uh, interest, but yeah. it's also essential to preserve desires, attachment, and meaning to life, and, and that's yes, exactly. 
And yeah, I think I, I, yeah, I understand and I think I agree with that. I mean, would you agree that in the end, it is also about, I mean, you know, it's it's about, because, you know, I, I, I now made the point twice, right, that there seems to be a tension between the commoning and the commonality and the emancipation. But I think they run together plausibly in your book and in your presentation by the idea that it is about re, 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 reinventing, reinvigorating the rhythms of life against the logic of the market, right? I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, basically, I mean, in the end, you come back to capitalism, which enforces a certain regime of time that goes against individual as well as collective rhythms, right? So it would be about, about uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah re-emancipating re, re from a temporality. You, you talk about heteronomy, right? Or the hetero poly, uh, heterochrony, so to speak. So, and, the, and the, the temporal regime, which is imposed on individuals as on groups, mm -hmm. is the accelerating logic of uh, capital accumulation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, yeah, it's absolutely... Uh... Uh, true and uh, and uh, it's exactly the the one of the the, 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 the fundamental um, uh, element we have in in mind uh, also because of the the, the fact that um, and, and probably something uh, we we did not uh, uh, work uh, well enough you know and it's uh, something which we need more uh, more work uh, but um, I was uh, pointing at uh, Latour about where to land and. This is also uh, in France the, the question of uh, uh, empowering the, the living. You know, it's uh, yeah. become, has become uh, something important, and, and I know also with your resonance uh, uh, theory. It's, uh, it, and yeah. it's, uh, but the, the idea of uh, that uh, that that giving room to uh, to to life or paying attention to to, to a relation to uh, to the rhythm of life, which is also the the speciality of plants and their, their own timing is probably a, a very strong way to uh, to push us toward a, a broader uh, conceptualization of time and space or mm. uh, an enlargement of uh, of uh, of the of the, the, the reduction of time and space, which is linked with capitalism, but is more profoundly linked with the linear timing of. Uh, uh, liberal uh, philosophy and uh, and the privatization, uh, linearization of uh, the distinction between private and public. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, private, if you were talking about privatization, uh, uh, it, it is a fundamental way to articulate the question of time and space. Yeah. And and, uh, and of course, those in Gatori, when they develop the idea of territory, they go uh, toward the smoothing space. You know, going against the linear or the limitation of uh, public and, uh, and and private. And, and squat, they do that, you know, the burrowing of space. And so the reintricating human and non-human life and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and stones. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really a way to, uh, to, uh, to uh, thicken a conception of time as you already uh, very well uh, demonstrated and thinking uh, of uh, conception of space. And, and yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, that's probably the, the idea that you are we had a too poor of an idea for time and space to, to really uh, come up with this new core politics and this new articulation of that dilemma of the, of the, of the, of the singular and the common. Yeah. Okay. And there's one interesting uh, question already in the question and answers uh, part, right? And uh, again, you are invited to uh, put in whatever you might, uh, you might think of. But the question here is whether you have thought about Rudolf Steiner and the Anthroposophia, right, part, because of mm -hmm. course, eur eurythmy, eurythmics, right, is, a, is, a, is a, an important element uh, with this thinking. And also he tries, he's, he's thought a lot about architecture and farming and health economy. So it sounds like, uh, uh, like uh, something that fits with your idea. So the question by Martin Böckstiegel is uh, whether you uh, draw on that too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I almost uh, jumped into the question uh, when I was answering uh, right, uh, right before. Um, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, work on, uh, on, uh, on Steiner. Uh, and that's, uh, but, uh, but of course we, we knew we broadly know his, uh, his perspective, and uh, we also uh, looked at the, the debates uh, about the re-inhabiting uh, from the 70s. Uh, there's a book from Laura Sintemery also about that. And, and so the, the whole uh, uh, tradition of Steiner, uh, and but also of, uh, of the different uh, tradition of, uh, of permaculture, they all point 
to this knowledge or to the attitude of uh, arrhythmia, as we said, and, uh, and that's one of the strong uh, uh, forces of uh, the idea that behind the three uh, also moment of that uh, choreopolitics, and uh, this, this, this stronger reflection for the past 20, 30 years on uh, arrhythmia, on, on re-articulating uh, uh, humans and non-humans or, or, or life. Uh, but uh, around commoning, there was well, strong, uh, of course, uh, discussion about uh, commons, and uh, but also in relation to the multitude, also uh, uh, mm -hmm. not as a as impoverished uh, way of uh, building up a common world, and uh, and then around the uh, autonomy, there's a, there's a, there's a eurythmia, there's a, the whole uh, discussion of part and a, a, a more recent one about uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about multitude and so on, may I ask also about the choreo politics, which I find very interesting, right? But I was, I, I was, uh, I, I was unsure about who is doing the choreography, right? I mean, are you thinking of a kind of political? I mean, would it be this a kind of state politics? You have some elements there, like basic income. I always think is a good idea, right? Or is it a kind of spontaneous organization of the of of the multitude, so to speak? Yeah, that's a that's a good question, which we did not develop in the in the book. And uh, my answer uh, at that point, uh, it would be institution. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's, uh, he, it's uh, when I was looking at squats, for example, uh, they, uh, I was looking at the institutionalization of squats, uh, but where, and it's something already which is uh, present in, in the work of Bart and, mm -hmm. uh, and Reich. They say that even small collectives, they start to develop some forms of states, you know, to, to, to politically organize, you know, the, the common life, you know. And so it's a question already for a squatting community, but it's a, a question for, uh, for uh, farmers, and, uh, but it's a question for, uh, for a city uh, government, you know. And so it's, a, it's the political question of career politics as framed within an institution taken in a broad way. That would be my... Uh, my, my, my intuition, uh, but we did not develop that. Yeah, but thank you very much to, to bring that to the fore. Yeah, I think I, I think I agree with you. I, I would also argue that we need kind of collective, maybe even collective rhythms, particularly collective zones like like the Sunday, right? I'm not, I don't care whether it's the Sunday or something else, but also the holidays, right? Let's say the time between Christmas and New Year's Eve is a very particular time, socially speaking, right? And I, th I believe it has to be protected politically by the state, right, in order to allow spontaneous choreography then uh, from by, by the people and by parts of the people. But there's also an, a question now by uh, Misha Garbovich, please. Thank you. Um, so thanks, Luca. This was really fascinating. And I'd like to, to probe uh, a little more the, the question of space in all of this. Um, and I, I'd like to start with Mount Athos. Um, because unlike Roland Barthes, for whom Mount Athos was just a, a fantasy, I, I've actually been there. Uh, and uh, I had some very interesting experiences regarding kind of collective and individual time. For example, the fact that you're trying to just relax in the monastery dorm, and then a young monk comes along with a really loud bell, uh, exhorting you to actually join the, the communal prayer. But I mean, Still, I, I do think that a lot of what, what Bart read into this does work, but it works because it's a gated community, right? It's, a, it's essentially a closed off space, which only allows 110 people every day uh, to, to kind of to visit and, and participate. Um, and they have a lot of physical space to spread out and also to have sufficient distance even between the different monasteries. And um, I'm, I'm wondering whether that's not uh, a problem for the kind of, you know, spatial dimension of choreopolitics that you're, you're aiming for. Because uh, all of the, the many positive examples that you mentioned, or, or most of them, I guess, be it squats or be it, you know, bolos or be it other kind of experiments in communal living, um, they tend to be relatively small and, um, you know, restricted to a specific area that needs to be occupied or cordoned off or reconquered, right? And a lot of these kinds of utopias uh, tend to involve a kind of rural fantasy of escape from urban life, 
because of course, a lot of the pathologies that you described are uh, a result of, of massive urbanization, right? So I'm wondering, maybe it's a question of scale, right? To what extent can we take uh, the, the many different, really interesting, really fascinating, and sometimes uh, kind of locally successful experiments in uh, reconquering spaces for, for you know, idiorhythmic existences, and then uh, telescope that onto the kind of meta level or the kind of larger level um, that would be required in order to really transform life and society for more than a few very actively engaged people, right? So how do we get to, to a state where everything that you're, you're advocating um, becomes the, the purview, the domain of maybe not even the majority, but a really sizable proportion of the population under contemporary urban conditions where space is really scarce and where the vast majority of people have been socialized into you know, living in relatively standardized spatio-temporal conditions. Thank you. That's a, that's a hard and, uh, and a fantastic question. A, a, a multiple question, actually. And um, the, 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 I will try to, 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 to take a few steps uh, to answer it. Um, uh, of, of course, the, when, I, um, when I answer uh, before to Hartmut Moza about the idea of institutions, I was still a bit avoiding the question of the state. And uh, and uh, and uh, but the idea was also that to to tackle the question of public action of the state, not in a, in a different way that the public action of more smaller communities. So the, the idea was there is no, uh, no 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 fundamental jump in in, in that uh, jump of scale, transformation of scale, but um, uh, of course um, the the the. The, 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 my example, there were a lot about small communities, but not only, huh? because uh, I was uh, discussing uh, the question of, for example, uh, uh, basic income. And also we had the question of the, of the urban light, uh, lighting at night, you know, and, uh, and uh, which are lower down, not only for uh, uh, consuming less energy, but also to uh, to give more room for uh, uh, animals, life forms, you know, and uh, and so it's really about uh, paying attention to how do we pay attention to uh, differing uh, life forms and and composing them, and uh, and uh, and basic income, but also sharing of uh, uh, maternity and paternity leaves. Uh, they are they they are ways to to maybe uh, turn around because uh, I. I wrote uh, uh, in one of the slides the idea of a margin of maneuver. Uh, and, it's, uh, and it's that question of uh, appropriation, which is, must be raised not only on a, on a common, uh, on, a, on a small level, but of course on an urban level. Uh, and, and there's lots, that's the reason people, they, they invade parts, you know, and they, but they, they squat buildings, you know, they, they appropriate space. And, and the answer right now, it's something called by my friend Mark Drivieri, the, the, the guaranteed city, the certified city, the, 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 the idea where we are trying to produce with labels and indicators, benchmarking indicated indicators for a, a good quality of light. But then we are like a, a formalizing space, a formalizing qualities, uh, uh, and producing, uh, in the end, uh, very normative uh, ways of life. And the idea with the current politics is to, uh, to explode and, 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 uh, it's, uh, and, and, and to find how to we, we can give uh, more uh, margins of maneuver, you know, and, and it's hard. I don't know exactly because we are trapped into uh, this, uh, the, the multiplication of regulation, which is also linked with uh, the strong land pressure and prices. And, uh, but what we know is that we, we need something to, uh, to make room, you know, and, to, uh, and, 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 and the, in the new urban projects, they also trying to give more room for unfinished projects uh, uh, and basic income would be another way to, uh, to detach uh, work and, uh, and revenue. And so it's really about uh, how do you, we, uh, we find ways to, uh, 
to give more possibility to express not only uh, individual idiorism, but collective idiorism that build up different forms of commoning. And, and in that road, uh, there's one important aspect I wanted to come back to. It's the fact that uh, we need walls. We need what? We need walls, walls. Uh, I was talking about the cooperative. I'm, a, I'm a leading, a, which is a, a post squat cooperative. We, are, we, 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 we discovered as many of us in Europe that uh, temporary policies, uh, politics and uh, uh, the radicality of uh, ephemeris, uh, that was something very famous also for the Gattari, you know, tactical things that we lost the battle. And, uh, and the, the, uh, especially the, the, the accelerated rhythm, the, 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 the rhythmic pressure of capitalism uh, uh, produces uh, the need for disruptive idiorhythmic, which are not only in the head of people, but which occupy space. And, and that's uh, my, my friend Mathieu Berger calls it uh, the enclave inclusive, the inclusive uh, enclaves. Uh, you know, and uh, and when I do my cooperative, it's a big building, and inside I, I can put uh, militants, artists, uh, something that doesn't have the, the state because they, they have some some building for artists, some buildings for uh, squatters, some building, and so the the the, the conquest, and, and so in a certain way the, we we need the monastery, but maybe without the bell, and um, and, uh, and 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 the Montatos was was interesting because. And now probably the monastery is also more uh, eterythmic, but uh, it, it, that is strong, small, little cabins. And that's where comes the flair of also uh, the eterythmic. And, and, and so it's really a, about uh, uh, not getting communities as a, as a, as a, as a way to, uh, to, to extract oneself, uh, uh, but getting communities as a way to, to build the necessary walls for uh, hospitality. And uh, and that's uh, and I think that's uh, the and and then if we need walls, we need institutions, and then maybe we need state. But that's uh, that's another question. It's true. There's a there's an anarchist uh, flair into uh, eurythmia. I mean, if I can come uh, come come in here again, I, I think. Uh, I think I, I, I quite like that. I also like the anarchist element, right? But I, I would like to ask you to maybe uh, to uh, to uh, give a give a definition of your conception of emancipation, because when I was listening now you, to your answer to uh, Misha Gabovic, right? Uh, it, what I noticed is that you know you talked about we need more space, we need more possibilities, we need more room for maneuvers, and this is exactly this is always my problem, right? Well, I think our conception of emancipation and maybe also autonomy Autonomy is exactly one driver for what you then say leads to the pathology of congestion, suffocation, dizziness, and exhaustion, right? We need more of everything in order to give people freedom, right? They should have more space. They should have more options. They should have more possibilities. So, so I think, I don't think it's, it, it's inconsistent what you're saying, but I think it all hinges or depends on your conception of emancipation, right? Yeah, it's true. Uh, I linked emancipation with uh, with autonomy, yeah. uh, and uh, and I linked autonomy with uh, the, the the relational meaning of autonomy uh, given by Bart, but, uh, yeah, but okay. and then after that many other and that's uh, uh, autonomy and emancipation. It's the possibility to to deploy a, mm -hmm. a form of life. You know, it's not the independence of uh, of rules, uh, but it's really about also uh, gestures and conduct in time and space. And, um, and so that's the reason we need walls or we need uh, supports, but we need also uh, gesture from the other, the, the look of the other, which recognize me. And, so the, and the reason maybe we need the right and law and, and state uh, uh, or basic income or stuff, uh, institution also to, but not before institution, uh, uh, specialities and before specialties or linked with specialties or uh, relationalities. Uh, and, 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 and then, and then, then, it is a relational uh, form of uh, emancipation. It could be the margin of manner could be uh, found in commoning. Yeah. Then mean I have to privatize what uh, my my maneuver margins. I, I, it's just a possibility maybe to yeah. go in that collective garden, you know, uh, instead yeah. of having my own private garden, you know. 
which brings new forms of conflicts and a contentious dimension, but, uh, but that's uh, core yeah. politics. And that's an answer to Martin Box Stiegel. Uh, he's asking about the harmony in the social field. We, we use uh, arrhythmics, but uh, if I was careful to take a Pine Bosch and, uh, and, uh, and free jazz, it's really about uh, the idea we don't want to lose agonistic dimensions. And so it's really about the uh, arrhythmia. There's a moment of course, that we have to 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 go along, you know, and yes. uh, and there are the elements of harmony, uh, which are of course part of of, of a good life, probably. And uh, but uh, we really don't want for our core politics to be some kind of uh, we are. There's a possibility to find the good rhythm or to find an harmonious society without conflicts. Of course, not. It's really uh, mm. the the conflicts that, that you pointed out, and 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 Misha is also uh, uh, are uh, will remain vivid. And we, we still have to work on the relation to states and uh, on institution and uh, and, uh, and uh, abusive uh, appropriation and uh, and, and the thing of oppression. Yeah, I find this very interesting because I think the way you describe it, it seems to point actually quite towards a similar logic than what I try to, you know, I, I also ask myself what could be the, the solution to the acceleration problem, the time problem. And I came up with this idea of a res of resonance, right? And, and, and I think this has a lot to do. Resonance is a kind of, at least it, as I envision it, right, is a kind of polyrhythmic thing, right? Where you listen and answer in a kind of co collective movement, which allows, which is not just complete harmony of movement, right? I, I always insist that resonance is, is, a, is an element of listening and answering. So it has this dynamic interplay, like like a rhythm, like a polyrhythm, I would say, right? Uh, but it's not it, it's not just harmony, right? It, 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 it allows for disagreement and difference and tension. This is exactly what makes the rhythm, right? So this is... A, this is uh, quite interesting that apparently when you maybe when you think about uh, the pathologies of time, right, you end up with this kind of a dynamic uh, uh, conception of rhythm. Yeah, yeah. we 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 um, well as it was a manifesto, we we did not discuss too much in detail the uh, authors and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course uh, we had in mind your important book on resonance, and it was not uh, tackled. In, in, in that moment, but uh, we, we felt that uh, we had to go in our, in our direction about, uh, about uh, starting to frame career politics, but uh, I think the next move would be to, 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 to debate or discuss. And, uh, and, uh, and it's, uh, for me, it was, uh, we were really happy, and there's, uh, I think there's, uh, there's also Guillaume Drevon and Vincent Kaufmann, still uh, uh, two important uh, a coaster and it's really a collective work yeah. and uh, they are in the room they can say something but they, they were we were all really excited to have you as a discussant uh, oh, no, yeah. we know that it's uh, it was a real ma major uh, milestone for us yeah yeah, no, I think I can learn a lot from you, right? I, I would not suggest that that this uh, this uh, what you're doing there and what you're working on has to go in the direction of resonance. I just uh, uh, see it as a as an element of conversion, right? A convergence. It's it's very interesting, right? That we might uh, actually think along the same lines. So I think we are drawing towards a close, right, and running out of time, unless uh, there's uh, some more questions from the audience but there's one thing i would like to ask you uh, right if there was uh, you, you know since it's about choreo politics i mean what what do you think if, if you were a politician what kind of steps or what, what would you think are the most important elements we could uh, introduce <laughs> right to uh, either to kind of uh, create cr create uh, the, this uh, kind of uh, uh, a polyrhythmic society by by uh, by institutional means or to create spaces which uh, allow for the for the invention for the development of uh, of such uh, new forms of uh, um, eurythmia yeah i would say uh, spaces because there's this time bureau uh, bureau du temps time office is a which uh, partly, and uh, Luc Vazici was really uh, uh, contributing to the foundation of that like 20 years ago. And, uh, and now he wrote the book with us. And, and it's really also part of that, that, the fact that the shortcomings of temporal policies uh, uh, as urban policies and, uh, and the need that we, is, uh, we have to work also about the uh, uh, land pressures and, and, and specialities of the, of the urban setting to, 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 to complete that, that, that urban policies. And uh, but maybe, I don't know, if Guillaume uh, wanted to say something, uh, he's, uh, he, he remained 
And of course, it's very welcome to it. Really well, uh, a last word if you wanted to say something as, as we're coming to the end. I can uh, just uh, make him uh, a panelist, right? <laughs> Is there something you would like to add? Guillaume? Uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe yeah, yes, a young, very young child. So, ah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's it. This is a those are the old, old 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 <laughs> like this on one side holding up. Uh, yeah, but uh, now, but uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 we are discussing uh, in Paris. They also the, the work of Moreno with uh, this fifteen minutes uh, uh, idea of uh, the, the fifteen minutes uh, city. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, but he's now looking into a special also uh, access and stuff like that. So so there's a lot of networks of people thinking about those questions. Guillaume, you see there, yeah. Hello, <laughs> good to see you. Is there anything you Hello. would like to add? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, first, this is a great honor to discuss with you, Arthur Rosa. Hello. Because I, I'm a fan of you. Yeah. So uh, maybe. Uh, so in addition, um, of course, we try to we are trying to develop a scientific agenda around the, the, the idea of prismology. Um, in this uh, this way, there is the first uh, the first part of the prismology is about uh, temporal vulnerability at uh, individual level. Secondly, there is uh, the question about uh, uh, what is uh, sustainable rhythms for uh, for city and for environment pressure. And the last one, of course, I think is, is the questions of public policies in the territory and how to apply a regulation of rhythms to have a more, more important uh, or, or less important impact on, on environment and also on people. And of course, concerning the question of emancipation. Mm. So it's uh, just uh, last day, uh, last uh, word about uh, yeah. It's a very rich uh, scientific program for the next years. Yeah, yeah it's fascinating. Th thank you very much for, for this. I mean, uh, there is also, I mean, there is, I think I see, I see everywhere a kind of co conversion towards a kind of temporal politics that, that politics, I mean, in Switzerland, once uh, Pascal Kuschpan, right, who once that, that uh, said that there is enough uh, material wealth in Switzerland, for example, right, but what is missing is a kind of temporal wealth and a, and a, and a temporal justice also. But in, in Germany, there's the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Zeitpolitik, right, working exactly along those uh, uh, ideas and of course the Tita slow movement and other movements mm -hmm. are trying to uh, uh, to to build this uh, kind of a, a, a different forms of politics which allows for different forms of uh, yeah re rhythmization so to speak uh, of society so I think what you're doing there is really uh, very important and very seminal I'm pretty sure it's going to be taken up by uh, by by many people around Europe and maybe even beyond thank you very much thank you right. so much for uh the discussion. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the two of you and to the authors, right? And of course, uh, to Luca Pataroni also for the uh, for the presentation. And I, I think I'll leave the last word to Misha Gabovic. And uh, thank you, Hartmut Rosa, for for chairing and uh, and participating in the discussion. This this has really been extremely fascinating and stimulating. Um, just to close, I would like to point out that um, at the Einstein Forum, we have a, a whole a whole number of really interesting events coming up in, in very dense uh, temporal succession over the coming uh, days and weeks. But there's one in particular that I would like to point out to this audience, uh, because uh, one of the, the authors that Luca mentioned is uh, our friend and colleague, uh, Laura Centemeri, who wrote a, a marvelous book about the permaculture movement. And uh, she is going to um, give a talk based on that book uh, here in this, in this virtual space on the 9th of June. So you're all very welcome to attend this, but of course uh, also other events in the online Einstein Forum. And I really do hope that uh, by the next semester at the latest, we'll be back in offline mode and we'll be able to welcome many of you uh, in our beautiful space in Potsdam. So thanks again, everyone uh, for participating and see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. Good, good night. Goodbye. Yeah, you, uh, Atmut, was very. Uh...